Welcome to the Clear to Close podcast with your host, local mortgage expert, Ryan Bolton. Ryan has the questions and answers, tips and tricks, do's and don'ts, and expert guests to explain all the steps needed to buy or sell real estate. And now it's time for the Clear to Close podcast. Hey everyone, Ryan here. I am a mortgage nerd. Today I've got a special guest with me, Jared Plu with Infinity Title. We're going to do a market update of the third quarter of 2024. But I also want to mention kind of a fun thing I'm working on. You can see on the screen here. Uh, nerd, as you can see, kind of got a hat. I got the hat right here. I've got a fun ways to say, I'm going to get the mic out of the way, nerd. And so if you go to my website at nerd with the three, N3RD, nerdmerch.com, I've got all these fun categories of ways to show off your inner nerd. Uh, it just kind of came up with this idea and I thought it'd be just fun. And I met with other people. So I've created different categories like car nerds and sport nerds and gym nerds and all kinds of book nerds and all kinds of fun different ways to show off your inner nerd. So I just wanted to kind of promote that side a little bit. I've got mugs and hats and hoodies, all kinds of fun stuff to just, if you're a nerd like me and you like nerding out on all kinds of different stuff, why not wear a hat? Why not wear a hoodie, a shirt, something like that? I thought it would just be kind of fun. So it's been a little side project of mine called nerdmerch.com. And nerd is with the three. It's kind of a backwards E, kind of that idea, nerd merch. And we got all kinds of stuff, hoodies, hats, shirts, I mean, I've mugs. I've just kind of come up with fun ways to just show off your inner nerd and maybe get a conversation started with somebody if you're drinking out of a mug and say, what does that mean? So, well, I'm, I'm a nerd. <laughs> I'm proud of it. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to have a, a website that can just kind of show off your inner nerd and uh, whether it's a specific category or not. So I just wanted to kind of promote that today on the show. But let's get to today's topic. We're going to do a recap of the third quarter of Washington County we're going to talk about some stats and stuff like that. So again, Jared, Infinity Title, thanks for coming on the show. You're one of our experts here. Love having you on the show. Uh, I, I, I mentioned we both have to wear hats. We usually don't wear hats all the time. And uh, LA, LA, what's that? What does that even mean? Oh, look at this. My we got Dodgers, a... baby. <laughs> Playoff starting. We got a we've got a t a tough uh, task ahead of us with uh, facing the Padres. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun. Okay. Well, let's get into some stats today. We got a slide here. We want to kind of break down what's happened in Washington County. And um, it's something where that'll give us a breakdown of kind of what's happening. We also have some national stats. So, Jared, you got some slides here. We have uh, popped up on the screen. So, what's some of the numbers that jump out to you? Yeah. So, we're looking at a uh, number of tr transactions on the left in red. You've got uh, sales. And on the right, you've got uh, uh, trust deeds or, or mortgages. So, <laughs> just got to you got to got to get closer to the mic. <laughs> Can you hear me? There you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. All right. So, yeah, so and and just to kind of give you uh where this data is coming from, this is straight off of Washington County uh recorder's office. So, um if you're, you know, an agent or looking at the MLS, the the number is going to be a little different. So, this is straight off of the county site. Cuz this um, also pulls anything that's even a for sale by owner. This is also pulling just any kind right. of transfer of ownership is yeah. what you're pulling. Okay. Yeah, Great. transfer deeds okay. um and trust deeds basically. Does this pull so. if somebody's putting in an LLC? Does that also kind of pull that or is it more actual change change of ownership? Yeah, it'll it, it doesn't matter who the grantor or grantee is. Okay. It, it's going to it's going to show up on this uh, data. So Okay. Yeah. So there might be a few that are in there that are also trusts moving into a trust. There might be a few moving in LLCs, but it still gives you an idea yeah. the activity level in Washington County how many properties are, are switching ownership is what we're looking at. Right. Okay. Yeah, and when we're comparing it, uh, you know, we're not necessarily looking at the specific numbers where we're trying to pull information from comparing it to some time period versus mm. another. So that's where it, it's useful information um, with what we have. So, yeah, if we compare it to, like, this year versus last year, you know, we're up a little bit. Um, I think it averaged about 10% higher this okay. year. Can we pull that chart up one more time, Freddie? We got Freddie Mac, our producer. Let's pull up that chart one more time. Okay, yep. Okay. Yeah, so the sales, um, if we're looking at the top left there, that chart there, so we're comparing 2024 to 2023, it's an 8% increase in the number of sales. Um, if we look at the comparing this year versus the 10-year average, um, we're down about 10%. Hmm, interesting. Uh, okay. On the 10 year average. So up year over year, but down on a 10 year average. Yeah. Okay. Right, that's good. That's good information. Yeah. And how many of those are ends up being loans? It looks like you have a chart here of how many are actual loans versus these cash buyers or that type of stuff. Yeah. So on the right there is the loans. And so uh, year over year, 4% uh, increase this year versus last year. 
And then the 10 year average down 31%. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. So loans, I mean, beginning last year, I mean, as soon as interest rates started going up, which was what? Uh, the spring of yeah, it's 20, spring of twenty one, you know, twenty twenty two, yeah, yep. twenty two, yeah. yeah. 22, so yeah. that's when you know things just really started to slow down for sales, but but especially for loans, right? You just don't have anybody refinancing, right? Right. Well, very few. People yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it, it's funny. I saw a report recently that said that refinancing's up because interest rates are down a little bit, like a hundred and eighty percent. Like it's a big number. But I'm like, well, yeah. When you went from when you go from four <laughs> to six, you know, when you go from a, zero to two, <laughs> right, right. So it isn't. It is something to see. The interest at least is up in, in the sense of people are, are asking about it more than they were. But there's also this sense of always wait and see. It's funny. People want to wait for interest rates, and then they do have the trend start to go down. I'm going to wait a little longer. Right. And we'll talk about that with how that's going to affect supply and demand a little bit. So let's jump on to slide number two real quick. I want to bring that one up. This is our months of inventory. This is a huge indication of where we're at on a national level along with a local level uh, for this year so far. So we are seeing a little bit of an uptick in the months of inventory. And how that works is if we stopped adding homes to the market and kept our current sales rate, we'd run out of homes to sell in 3.3 months. So anytime you're under about a six month inventory, it's considered a seller's market, meaning that there's more competition. There's more buyers than sellers. There's more, uh, uh, there's more sellers that than buyers. So then can affect the price a little bit more. They're a little bit more in the driver's seat when it comes to negotiating, especially in certain price ranges, anything under, I would say in Washington County, about 600,000 or less, there's way more buyers than sellers. So there's a lot less inventory, you have more multiple offers. So when you start seeing the inventory catching up a little bit, that can help to stabilize those prices. But what's interesting, even though we haven't gotten up to that six-month mark, we're not seeing huge price increases. But we didn't see big decreases when interest rates went up either. They just kind of stayed a little bit more flat. Appreciation went back to normal, even though our inventory levels really haven't gone back to normal yet. Yeah, And that's what you and I have talked about. If demand kicks up while we still have such low inventory – it's going to happen again. We're going to see prices go up quickly. So if people are waiting for some magic interest rate in their head, I'm going to wait till it hits five something or whatever the number is, you'll miss out, I think, on the price of the home because those prices will also go up. Yeah. And that's my, I I mean, biggest concern, mostly as a father. You know, I have a, a daughter that's 21. I have a son that's 15. Like, and I want them to live here. I want them to be able to live here. And, you know, me, I've, I own real estate. I've owned real estate for a long time in St. George. I love appreciation. Appreciation is great because right, right. I'm benefiting from it. But the downside is, is the future generations, my kids, you know, how are they going to be able to afford a home? I don't want them to, to live in, you know, Kansas only because that's the only place they can afford to buy real estate. Right, and it's right. so, you know, owning real estate, as we know, is like it's one of the best ways to grow wealth and to, to, to be wealthy or to have, you know, the, what you need. And so I worry about our home values, you know, I, I, and so as interest rates go down, like you're saying that demand's going to tick up, well, what's happening to, to supply? Um, hopefully supply, supply is keeping up with demand. And if that's the case, then theoretically values are going to stay the same or close to the same. And we won't see that serious spike in, in values. And I, I think that's part of why, it's important to have interest rates go down because we're not adding inventory without building it. It has to be something where it's a whole new construction. That's obviously going to be more expensive than some of the existing homes that are already built because you got to get the land, the development, the land costs, the labor costs, all the things are kind of built into a sales a price of a home. And you really can't even build a house at 300000 unless it's really high density or it's way further out of town. There's got to be stuff to, to do that. And that's where the administration or the future administrations are talking about freeing up some of this federal land, which Utah is a big deal. I remember during the debate they just had recently, they were talking about, well, Minnesota doesn't have a lot of federal land. Well, when you get west of the Mississippi, there's a ton of federal land that is closer to areas that could be served by releasing some of that land that really wouldn't be any other use. But then you'll have environmental issues, BLM issues, uh, Bureau of Land Management, that type of stuff that you have to unlock. And then some of it's so remote, you can't even get to it. Getting the infrastructure there is going to take a lot of time as well. Yeah. But if, that's kind of the first cost is the cost of the land. Then you have to labor the permits, the cost of all those stuff. All that stuff keeps getting added to it. And if that base price gets to the point where it's 200000 to have that lot ready, you can't build a $300,000 home on that lot. Yeah. You know, it's going to be six, seven 700000 So I think as interest rates go down, you may see more people that do have equity. They have an older home. They do want to upgrade. I had a client recently call me, and they've got two extra kids. They really need a bigger house, but they don't want to give up their 2% interest rate. 
and their three hundred thousand dollar loan to jump up to six or seven hundred thousand. So I think that's what I'm hoping to see as rates go down. Maybe more sellers will come onto the market, which will help offset that inventory. But I think most of us are worried that demand's going to kick up quicker than supply can kick up. Yeah. It's always going to lag behind because interest rates just boom lower today. Doesn't mean all of a sudden the home's built today or on the market today. It could be months after before the inventory can catch up. Yeah. And if we look at it on a local level, you know, micro, um, what's happening now, our, our market's just really weird. And it, it doesn't help that we're, we've got an election in, what, four weeks from now. Yeah, yeah. And so a lot of the rhetoric or a lot of the mindset of these potential buyers or buyers is we'll wait and see. Wait and see, yep. And, and it doesn't have so much to do with wait and see what interest rates do. It's like wait and see what happens with the election. But honestly, uh, what we are hearing from people is that it's less about who's going to win and, and it's more about just let's get it over with. I like, agree. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We don't care who, well, I shouldn't say we don't care, but regardless of who wins, then we can make a decision. Then we can feel comfortable with the direction of where we're going and we can pull that trigger and, and actually buy something. But we've already seen, like, uh, in supply, we have seen an uptick in supply. So our inventory is growing. And so I think as those interest rates started to go down, we had sellers that said, okay, rates are coming down. Now it's time for me to put my home on the market. It's going to take a few months to sell. We got to, we'll, so we'll hopefully be buying something in, you know, December, January, February, which is a good time to buy um, seasonally. And so now we're seeing this uptick in inventory or supply, but the demand hasn't been there yet because right. I think of the election where people are just like, nah, wait a little bit longer. So it'll be interesting to see what happens after the election because traditionally um, our market is seasonal. And right. if we look at, at the number of transactions in that chart, Q2 is our most our busiest uh, uh, quarter of the, the year. Um, you know, which is April, May, June. And then Q3 is our second busiest quarter of the year. Now we've just finished Q3. Now we're into Q4 and Q2, which are traditionally our slowest months. Right, right. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with the election being over and rates coming down. I mean, who knows? We might see a really busy November, December, January, February, busier than we're used to. I, I totally feel that way. It seems like October, everybody starts... Coming back to St. George, events start happening, golf tournaments. we got a very big golf tournament that's coming. A PGA event stop is actually coming to our newest golf course here at Black Desert. And October is always kind of seems like the busy month. Everybody's back in town. The roads get a little busier as people come back to St. George. But then everybody starts getting into the holiday mindset for November, December. Yep. So you're totally right. That last quarter, we usually see a slowdown. I see refis actually kick up yep. during that last quarter a little bit. And that might be what's going to offset some of this demand on interest rates will be more of a refi market for the fourth quarter. But I agree with you. The, the First quarter is going to be pretty interesting in 2025. Election will be over with. Uncertainty will be over with. Just let's move on. I, I've often used this line. This has been the longest election cycle of our lives. Yeah. I mean, something normally is a 10-month, 8-month thing. It feels like it's been years. And no matter <laughs> yeah. what happens, the kind of Biden-Trump era is kind of over in a sense. It will be kind of new. I mean, regardless of who wins, it will kind of be that, that era is over. And we're starting to see new voices, new political figures kind of coming, rising to the top. Yeah as this cycle is kind of working itself out. But it's just been one of the longest that we've had. But it, I think there is a lot of people that were waiting for better interest rates. Now they have a reason. There always seems to be this weird reason to wait. And I always tell them, I say, if there's a house available that fits your market or fits your budget, fits your family style, fits your location, all those things click the boxes, that's the reason to buy that house, not some magic number in front of it. Because if everybody's waiting and everybody shows up at the same time, you're going to be in a bidding war again. And the house that you wanted at 450 will either be gone because it sold last month, or there'll now be five other buyers that can afford that house. And now there's just going to be a run on that price again. Yeah. Like we saw during COVID, it wasn't people pricing their home wrong. It wasn't like they were asking $1 million for this house. They just got a million dollars yeah. for it because they, you know, they priced it at 500000 but they got 550 They got 575 They got, because St. George is such a great place to live and so many people are discovering it, and there's more demand on the limited inventory, it's going to raise the prices regardless. So, yeah, great. You get a 4% interest rate. But now you spent a hundred grand more on the house Yeah, where you could have bought it, got that appreciation, and refied if rates get better. Yeah, it, It's just better to buy. I think there's a really a cool 
little window right here for buyers oh, if yeah. they'll pull the trigger, if they can find a home that works. Yeah, I completely agree. The worst thing you can do when we're talking about real estate and, and getting into the real estate market or buying real estate, the worst thing you can do is try to time it. Yes. I mean, I mean <laughs> the question of when should I buy, well, you should have bought two years ago is <laughs> right, pretty much right, the answer right. every time. You should have already done it. Right. Because just get in, just get into the real estate. Start appre getting that appreciation and don't ever get out of it. Right. So don't don't try to sell at the top and buy at the bottom because you're probably going to be wrong. You're not going to time it right. right. Just get into real estate and stay in it. And that's the thing that too much of it, even the president, the vice president of debate talked about how much of housing becomes a commodity too much. There's other reasons to own a home. Having a locked in payment, have it much more consistent, you know, where rents can change. I mean, ask yourself right now, with all the cost increases and all the value increases, do you think your rent's going to go down over the next year or two? Yeah, not likely. When you go to renew, are you thinking how much is it going to go up? You're not thinking it's going to go down. You're lucky in most cases for it to stay the same. Yeah. You really have seen those go up. Now, maybe somebody- If it stays the same, you got a nice landlord. Yeah. Or you've got somebody that has a free and clear house or some doesn't care and just comfortable making whatever he's making. But yeah. almost every landlord I know is raising the price yep. because their costs have gone up. Maybe they cover the landscaping. Maybe they cover utilities. Maybe they cover other things. Property taxes have gone up. Certain things have gone up. They just have to naturally raise those prices a little bit. And honestly, they can. If all of a sudden that property comes on the market, they'll have somebody that will rent it for more. There'll be other people coming in. And like you said, I, I'm worried about the next generation that isn't going to be able to live in St. George. Like we, we Dixie- or uh, uh, Utah Tech is running into that issue where they haven't had anybody be able to graduate and stay here, or the workforce has to be so far out of town, like a Reno area or, um, you know, like Tahoe area or Palm Springs. A lot of their workforce has to be pretty far out of town and has to commute in to offer the services and the way of life that we have. Yeah. So that would be one of the concerns that we have here, too, is making sure we do keep the prices where it's reasonable. But a lot of it does stem from interest rates, but it's amazing how that half percent interest rate Makes a big deal over thirty years, yeah. but payment wise, it it could be maybe fifty bucks. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't. It's amazing how it doesn't make as big a deal. But fifty grand more on the price, yeah. that's gonna get eaten up way more than having the interest rates go down. Right. Yeah, we're gonna see a lot more multi generational homes. Absolutely, so I've already we, started seeing it. We yeah. had a fun closing. Was that not the funnest closing? <laughs> where you had three siblings, three adult siblings, uh -huh. and the mom and dad buying all buying a house together. They're right. all living in the house together. Right. And it was like the funnest club. They were so giddy about it. They were just so, it was, and that was the only way, thing they could do, right? right. That was well, the only they, way they I, could buy something was to do it together. And they looked at it and they said, okay, I could go out and rent something for 2,500 bucks or two grand a month, or I could be a thousand bucks with my family and be able to gain a house, get some appreciation. And as we get older or whatever, we can break it apart. We can refinance it. We can do other things like that. So I'm starting to see more applications that are co-signing with roommates from college or brother and sisters, or that type of stuff, to just be able to at least get their foot in the door, and they're going to be ahead. I, I, you said you said a perfect example. The best time to buy would have been six months ago, two years ago. Mo, I don't know very many people that regret buying a house when they look back. Yeah, maybe it was hard at first. I get it. I mean, I'm not trying to say it's the easiest thing. You still got to find a home. I've got a client that's probably put in four offers that have all just been outbid, or just they had to offer less than what they were asking for and just didn't get their offer accepted. And I worry for them, too, and that's why we're trying to get the word out. That's only going to get a little worse in certain price ranges. As rates go down and more people enter the market, that same home is going to fit the budget of more people, which means more people that can maybe outbid or has, have a little more income or whatever will be able to offer more, and your offer just goes away. Yeah. And so – one of the things I've really been pushing people to do is at least get pre-approved. At least find out what you qualify for. That way, if you if a home does hit the market, you can jump on it. Yeah. You're not saying, oh, I want to go do an offer, but I got to go get my loan. I got to get my tax returns, my pay stuff, all this stuff. By the time you do all that, the home could be gone. Yep. So really, pre-approval is so crucial when the market's going to get a little bit tighter for buyers. Yeah. It really is. If you're a real estate investor... Uh, you know, you're doing fix and flips, you're doing spec homes, you know, things like that. Yeah, I get kind of like trying to time it. Um, maybe more seasonally, you're trying to time it, the purchase and the right. sale. Um, but if you're buying a home for yourself, there's no reason not to buy now. Even if your home doesn't appreciate in value, let's just say it stays the same for the seven years that you live there, you still build equity because part of that monthly payment is Great going point. towards paying down the principal. So you're going to, even if your home doesn't appreciate, you're going to have equity built. You're going to have a down payment for that next house. Right. And you're going to have some tax benefits you don't have by renting. And again, it's more consistent. The payment on a mortgage is way more stable than any other housing expense that you're going to have. 
And there's a pride of home ownership. There's something about owning your own oh, home, yeah. having your own space, Absolutely. be able to customize it the way you want. You put pictures where you want. I mean, there's just some – have a pet. I mean, yeah. that's one thing I think I saw a report that it, it showed one of the reasons like people want to buy a house. They want to be able to have a dog or a cat or, you know, they want to be able to have the family or just have a more stable place for their family. I mean, there's lots of reason to own a home other than just the financial reason. And I think the financial reason right now, there's a window here that you're going to be thinking in the first quarter of next year, maybe the summer of next year, that the house, I, that same house I just bought, I'm going to yeah. have to pay more for. It. Even I, though I got I a little would better have. interest rate. I'm I lost on how much appreciation would have had. And again, interest yeah. rates are what you can change. If rates get better, yeah, you have an option to refinance. Right. If prices get worse, you can't go back and say, ooh, I want that lower price. Yeah. So I, I agree. I think there really is a good window here. We're always going to talk about buying houses because we see a lot of long term benefit. But and a lot of times we have to convince ourselves sometimes that, ooh, this really is a great time to buy. Yeah. I feel like this is a ahead of the rush. It's beating the rush a little bit if you get started today. You yep. really do. Now, let's jump to another slide real quick. I think we've got a couple more. Let's go to three. Oh, here we go. This is our active listing count. So you can see, as we're talking about inventory here, that we're still less than the national average of inventory, but you have seen inventory increase a little bit. But look how slow that curve is. Even with interest rates the way they were, if rates drop, how quickly is that inventory going to go from 1250 on our chart here back to 977? So that's going to be... 300 plus houses just gone mm -hmm. and what price range do you think is going to go the quickest it's the one that most people can afford yeah so it's not going to be the million two million dollar home that's going to be disappearing quicker even though those are starting to uptick a little bit it's really going to be the homes that the workforce the people the kids the first-time home buyers that can afford with the income that's in town that are going to be the ones gone first they're yeah. just going to be gone faster yeah and if you wait for some special interest rate you are going to miss out on either the home being available in the first place or the price of that same home. Yeah. We've got some great builders in town and, you know, there's a new player, DR Horton that mm -hmm. came to town and they've done a great job of, of servicing that, that lower market. And I, I, I don't want to say that in a negative way, but they're providing an inventory that we desperately need at new construction to where people can get into a family home at $600,000 or less, $700,000 or less, which it's crazy that I'm saying that that's affordable. <laughs> that's a starter but, home. That's a but, starter home. <laughs> but still, I mean, if you're going to go build a spec home with a, you know, custom builder, you're going to be $350 a foot. So you want to build it, you know, a, a 3,000 square foot home, you're a million bucks right. For, right. for a home. Whereas, right. you know, some of these builders, and that's a lot of the increase in um, active listings is a, a lot of it's coming from DR Horton and some of those other builders, Salisbury. So where, much of it is new construction. Yeah. There's very little that's existing. I think that's that will help with interest rates if we can get some existing properties popping up. But we got a lot of bill. St. George is going to be a boom town for a long time. It's yeah. discovered. I mean, it's a Phoenix kind of Vegas climate without some of the stuff that comes with that. The the beauty of it. I I, I was at a function where a guy was talking about his drive to the Walmart is in hurricane, you know, just going down highway nine, going, I said, that's my commute to Walmart <laughs> done. You know, I yeah. want to move here. Cause he just thought that was such a beautiful drive. And, there, and I've always said you're more in the painting in St. George than other places. Oh, yeah. And it's just getting more and more discovered that golf tournament. I mean, you and I are golfers. Yeah. So we probably are more aware of it than maybe somebody else that's maybe into Iron Man or marathons or other things. But I tell you what, when that thing gets on camera, when they start panning back and you've got that yeah. green, green with the black rock and the red mountains, I, yeah, it's going to blow up. I yeah. really think it's going to blow up because it's just going to be on a medium of people that already know this is a golf mecca. Yeah. Now there's a PGA LPGA tour stop in in Utah for the first time in 60 years, and it's in southern Utah. It's going to put even more of a magnifying glass on on this area. Yeah, what we need to happen with that tournament is we need the spectators to really have a good time, right. enjoy the scenery, so that they want to come back. I think even more important is having the players have a really good right, experience right, right, right. Um, because, you know, right now we do have some big names that are coming. Um, he now helps to a ton. Um, Tony is one of the big names, and yeah. so he helps a ton. I don't think he's coming. Oh, isn't he? I really thought I looked, he was. I looked at the list. We just all assumed that Finau was going to be oh, playing. I thought he, well, yeah, I thought he but I looked at the list, and he's not. You know, the downside of, of the timing of this tournament right. is it's the season's over, and right. so now this is going towards the next season. So you, you have a lot of players that are trying to build their, their earnings for the next season and their points, their FedEx points. Um, and it counts towards that, which is great. And, but we have, you know, we have some big names coming, but if the players have a really good experience and they said, I'm coming back, they're not just going to come back. They're going to tell their buddies 
hey, you got to come to this tournament. Right. And that's the, the names that come are what will drive the success of the tournament. The bigger names we get, the more eyeballs on the TV, the more money you'll be able to make. And so um, I really hope that the players have a really good experience, enough that they will come back and they'll bring their friends. Well, great show as always. Uh, we're cl- wrapping up our Clear to Close podcast. Hope you enjoy. Please like, subscribe. Uh, check out ryanbolton.com. Uh, you can get in touch with me or Jared that way. We can get your pre-approval started. But we really want to earn your business, and it's really a good time to buy in southern Utah. We just love it here. So we'll check you out on the next uh, podcast, and have a wonderful day. This has been the Clear to Close podcast. Please submit your comments, questions, and topics for future episodes to cleartoclosepod at gmail.com. That's clear the number two, closepod at gmail.com or ryanbolton.com. Please like, follow, and share. And until next time, this is the Clear to Close podcast. The views expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of Patriot Home Mortgage, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number 299717. This has been a production from a podcast studio.